Good morning to you all. I hope you're all doing well at this time and managing fine. Uh, it's a lovely day where I am at the moment. Hopefully it is for you too. This is the service for the 21st of June. Our theme of service is God values us all. Our call to worship is taken from uh, Matthew 10:39. Whoever finds their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. And now our first item of praise is complete mission praise 181. God forgave my sin in Jesus' name. Please sing along with me. So complete mission praise 181. God forgave my sin in Jesus name. God forgave my sin in Jesus name. I've been born again in Jesus name. And in Jesus' name I come to you to share his love as he told me to. He said freely, freely you have received, freely, freely give. Go in my name and because you believe, Others will know that I live. All power is given in Jesus' name, in earth and heaven, in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name I come to you to share his power as he told me to. He said, freely, freely, you have received, freely, freely give. Go in my name, and because you believe, others will know that I live. I don't know about you, but that is a beautiful hymn. Let us now make our prayers of approach and confession to the Lord along with the Lord's prayer. So let us pray. Risen Lord, we understand so little of what your glory really means, yet we dare to approach you. Have mercy on us and fill us with wonder, understanding what we need to understand and marvelling at that which is beyond understanding. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and by what we have done, and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Let us all now say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. You are precious in his sight. What are some hobbies that people enjoy? It could be reading. It might be stamp collecting, possibly photography. They're all popular hobbies. Some people like to build things like model cars and airplanes. Others may enjoy outdoor things to do, like fishing or hiking. Do you have a hobby? What is your hobby? 
Do you think God has a hobby? Okay, I know the Bible doesn't tell us that God has a hobby, but if he did, do you know what I think it might be? Bird watching. If I use my imagination, I can see God sitting in heaven with a pair of binoculars. Perhaps he has a book, like the one that I found in the library. And he's looking at pictures of all beautiful birds which he has created. And he is trying to see how many of them he can find with his binoculars. If I really stretch my imagination, I can even hear him saying, There's a robin. There's a thrush, there's a finch, and there's a sparrow. A sparrow, of course he would see a sparrow. There are millions of them. You've seen them, they're common, they're ordinary brown sparrows, but God must have loved them because he made so many of them. One day Jesus was teaching his disciples that they should not be afraid. Don't be afraid when people threaten you, Jesus said. Two sparrows are sold for a penny, but not a single sparrow falls to the ground without your father knowing it. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. It has been said, God must have loved the common people because he made so many of them. I don't think that God sees us as common or ordinary. If he did, he would not love us in such an uncommon and extraordinary way. The Bible says, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. And that's taken from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. We are more precious to him than a whole flock of sparrows, and we know how much he loves the sparrow. Let us pray. Father, we know that we are precious in your sight. Thank you for loving us with such an uncommon and extraordinary love. Amen. Our first reading comes from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter um, 10, verses 24 to 39. So Matthew, chapter 10, verses 24 to 39, reading from the New International Version of the Bible. So let us hear the word of God. The student is not above the teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for students to be like their teachers and servants like their masters. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebul, how much more the members of his household. So do not be afraid of them, for there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside the father's care. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You're worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword, for I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me 
is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Amen, and thanks be to God for this reading of his holy word. Our next reading, also from the New Testament, comes from the book of Romans, chapter 6, reading from verses 1 to 11. So Romans, chapter 6, reading from verses 1 to 11, reading from the New International Version of the Bible, a passage entitled, Dead to Sin. Alive in Christ, so let us hear the word of God. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptised into Christ, Jesus, were baptised into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like this, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with. That we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Amen and thanks be to God for these readings of his holy word and to him be all glory and praise. sermon entitled God Values Us All. As Leila Gifty Akita has memorably said, nothing great was ever achieved without a personal sacrifice. You have to pay the price to realise your goals. Jesus told his disciples that they should expect to face what he would experience, the cross. Just as Jesus was mocked, his disciples would be mocked. Just as Jesus was persecuted, his disciples would be persecuted. Just as Jesus was crucified, his disciples would be crucified. In AD 70, Jerusalem and the temple would be destroyed by the Roman army. The Jews who were dispersed over the world lamented at their personal misfortune. The rabbi's response was, how can you complain about individual disaster when the Jewish temple has been razed to the ground? Just as Jesus carried his cross, we are also asked to carry our cross. We must not only share in Christ's glory, we must share in his suffering as well. The suffering we share is not a hardship, but a privilege. We're experiencing what Christ has experienced. We should be proud of this fact. Eric Linklater fought in the unsuccessful March retreat in the First World War. In his autobiography, he wrote of, ex of his experiences in the Black Watch, where he left the battle with one officer, one piper, and 30 soldiers still standing and still playing. One battalion, among so many that were devastated by this horrendous conflict. However, despite this, 
Their pride remained intact in belonging to this special group. As Christians, we grow closer through Christ's sufferings as we await our resurrection together. Jesus frequently told his disciples not to be afraid. They must show courage as they spread that message of hope to others. Nothing will be hidden. Everything will be known. The truth will prevail. Martyrs might die, but the truth would never die. The truth is the martyr's lasting reward. Are we a martyr for our faith? Has our faith strengthened or weakened as a result of this pandemic that we face? The message the disciples spoke and we speak must be delivered forcefully, not half-heartedly. If Christ whispers in our ear, we must be prepared to listen. It is only through Christ that we have the power to advance his message. Our listening skills then must be acute. Are we good listeners? The message we speak must still be spoken forcefully, even if the people we speak to bitterly resent the message. No one likes to hear the truth if that truth hurts. The disciples and all of us must listen attentively to Jesus and then speak with conviction to others. Do we speak with conviction to others or do we speak half-heartedly? No punishment is worse than the one a person faces when he disobeys God. Although a person may kill another, only God can destroy his soul. The moral for us all then is not to offend God. What humanity can do to each other and for each other is nothing compared to what God can do and for us. The Christian lives in fear of God, so does the Jew. God loves us, but we should both love and fear God. If we revere God, he will show his love for us rather than display his wrath. There are some things which are worse experiences than death. Showing disloyalty is one. We should never betray our friends and we should certainly never betray God. When we choose comfort over discomfort, our journey, although superficially easier, becomes much more difficult in reality. If God cared for the birds of the air, like the sparrows, he will care for us that much more. After all, all the hairs on our head are counted. We cannot move outside God's love. It reaches everywhere. If a person has faith in Jesus in this life, Jesus will have faith in the person for the life to come. If a person denies Jesus in this life, Jesus will deny that person in the life to come. We owe the Christians of the early church so much because without them there would be no church today. We can deny Christ with our words. We do this when we tell others we only follow Christ on a Sunday. The rest of the week is ours. We also deny Christ when we say nothing and do not stand up for our Christian faith. Remaining silent might be the easiest course of action, but it certainly is not the best course of action for us as Christians. We further deny Christ with our actions. If we choose to live a life of comfort, we deny Christ. If we choose to show bitterness to others, we deny Christ. If we look longingly at someone who is married to another, we deny Christ. We are told that our enemies may be from our own household. Some members may follow Christ whilst others reject him. Our loyalties are torn between our love for our families and our love for God. Maybe our love for our family stops us loving God. Maybe our complete love for God estranges us from our families. As we argue with our own families, we must choose how to behave. 
John Bunyan, the author of Pilgrim's Progress, worried about his family as he faced prison. How would they survive? Bunyan could not deny his faith despite these genuine concerns. Could we put God before our own family? Hopefully we are never faced with such a choice. Every Christian must carry their own cross. The career we do not choose, the promotion we do not seek, the non-Christian partner we do not marry, the immoral life we leave behind. Life is about sacrifice. Our sacrifice will, however, be nothing compared to Christ's sacrifice for us. To live a true Christian life, we cannot play safe. We cannot do what we want. A selfish life is an empty life. A selfless life is a fuller life forever with Christ. Paul discusses in Romans his critics' argument that his teaching encourages sin since God's grace must increase in line with the sin committed. In other words, why obey the law? Paul disputes this. How could a believer live in sin? When he is dead to sin, when we are baptised in Christ, we live a new life in God. When Paul said we are not a slave to sin, he did not mean we continue sinning, but we stop sinning altogether. When we live with Christ, after his resurrection, we also live with God. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are at one with God and one with Christ, and we do not live for us ourselves. Whilst following the law brings resistance, following Christ and being empowered by the Holy Spirit promotes love. Paul explains the power of sin in our life, lessons because God's law exposes sin and makes the sinner seek God's forgiveness. Christ's death and resurrection means the law has lost its authority and God's law has superseded it. Although we are freed from the power of sin, we are not freed from actual sin. We remain sinners. Through Christ's resurrection, we respond to God's grace. We are strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit working in Christ. Christ working within us gives our bodies life and love. We must give ourselves to God to overcome any sin we might have. As Dwight L. Moody has memorably said, let God have your life. He can do more within it than you can. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us now make our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession to God, so let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for walking with us through the seasons of our lives, for the winter when we are held safe in your arms through the darkness, for the hope of spring as we are filled with new promise and life, for summertime full of warmth and colour, and for autumn days as leaves fall to allow new growth you are always with us. Dear Lord, guard and keep us while we sleep, safe from fears, safe from pains. Bless our loved ones, strengthen the weak, feed the hungry, heal the sick and enrich the poor. Help us to enact your will and bring peace between people and nations. Dear Lord, we pray for the abused, the addicted, the bereaved, those in debt, the emotionally disturbed, the homeless, the hospital patient, the prisoner, the student, the worker and the unemployed. We pray for the leaders of the church and the leaders of our nation. We pray they listen to their congregations and their constituents. We pray for an ending to all wars, all terrorism and all torture 
and for a much more loving world. We pray for all countries who are experiencing civil war. We pray that everyone persecuted for their faith, the freedom to worship. We pray for everyone awaiting surgical procedures who have had their surgery deferred. We pray for everyone affected by coronavirus, the patients, the families and the carers. Let God keep them all safe. And all these prayers we ask in your name, Lord. Amen. Our final hymn this morning comes from Complete Mission Praise again. It is number 148 and it is For All the Saints. It has eight verses, but never mind. I will enjoy singing it and hopefully you will too. Complete Mission Praise 148 for all the saints. For all the saints who from their labours rest, who thee by faith before the world confessed, thy name, O Jesu, be forever blessed. Ah, alleluia, alleluia. Thou wast their rock, their fortress, and their might. Thou, Lord, their captain, in the well-fought fight. Thou, in the darkness, drew their one true light. Ah, alleluia, alleluia. Oh, may thy soldiers, faithful, true, and bold, fight as the saints who nobly fought of old, and win with them the victor's crown of gold. Ah, alleluia, alleluia. Oh, blessed communion, fellowship divine, we feebly struggle, they in glory shine, yet all are one, in thee for all are thine, ah, alleluia, alleluia. And when the strife is fierce, the warfare long steers on the ear the distant triumph song, and hearts are brave again on arms are strong. Ah, alleluia, alleluia. The golden evening brightens in the west. Soon, soon to faithful warriors cometh rest. Sweet is the calm of paradise the blessed. Ah, alleluia, alleluia. But lo, there breaks a yet more glorious day, the saints triumphant rise in bright array. The King of glory passes on his way. Ah, alleluia, alleluia. From earth's white bands, from ocean's farthest coast, through gates of pearl streams, in the countless host, singing to Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Ah, alleluia, alleluia. Thank you for singing along with me, all the eight verses. 
Let us now say the benediction together. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me this morning for this act of worship. I hope you all have a good week and I will see you all at the same time next Sunday. So thank you for joining me and goodbye.